and welcome to this tutorial on how you can mint NFTs into NFTX and stake them at the same time so that you don't need to pay any mint fees as they go in. So we're going to start on a, um, the homepage and we're going to head over to the app. Uh, this is the new uh, V2 and we're going to go into the mint. So we've already got our wallet connected and if we go to the mint screen this will show us all of the nfts that we have inside of our wallet that we're able to mint into the existing vaults that exist on nftx v2 now we're going to use uh, bunny as the example so if i click go to vault and these are the two bunnies i have inside of my vault which i can mint in now if i select one you can see here that if i mint this in there is a five percent mint fee uh, so I will only receive back 0.95 bunny tokens from this. If I select two, same thing, it's a 5% mint fee, so I get 1.9, I lose 0.05 tokens on each of those. Now this mint fee is then passed through to anyone that is staking their LP position. So if I have a look at the staking page, I'm actually staking Avastars here at the moment, and you can see that so far I've earned 0.2 Avastars and I can claim 0.14 Avastars at the moment. So for every uh, mint or targeted redeem on the vaults, those fees get distributed to anyone who is staking. So we're gonna look at how we can stake. So if I come back to the bunny vault, if I then select this bunny and I wanna mint in here, but I don't want to pay the 5% fee, you can avoid that fee by also staking at the same time. So I'm going to say continue. Now, what this means is that we're going to be putting our NFT into the vault. We're gonna be getting our token back and then we're gonna be pairing that token with some ETH. So here we are the first liquidity provider. So if the, if the vault that you're minting to doesn't already have a pool set up in Sushi, this is what you will be asked to do to start with. So you're going to be minting across one bunny and you need to provide a certain amount of liquidity against that bunny as well. So you're effectively creating the market. Now, to work out how you're going to create the market, what I do is I go to, we've got this hover here which takes you to OpenSea. And if we come to OpenSea here, I can see these are the, this is the Gembit bunny that I have. So then I go to the uh, collection page itself where I want to be able to view all of them. Uh, and then I do a filter by buy now. So it's just show me the ones that are currently on sale and sort with the lowest value to the highest value. So here we can see that the cheapest bunnies at the moment are going for 0 0.015. Um, some are going for 0 0.02, but that is sort of like the, the base. So I'm going to set this at uh, 0 0.02 for the um, the liquidity, or you can pick 0 0.015. That's up to you, but you're, you're setting it. Uh, so now for anyone that is going to be coming in and doing the same process, when they add a bunny, they will automatically have to add the same amount of ETH that you're you're mentioning here, like that you're putting in to begin with. So we're going to do this to start with. Now, a couple of things to remember. There is, I'm going to get 0% of the uh, the pool share at the moment because the, there's nothing in there. Um, the mint fee is 0% because we are waiving it because you are providing liquidity. And the other thing is that there is a lock time. So to avoid people that just want to uh, skip the mint fee and then withdraw the liquidity immediately, that doesn't help the vault at all. So we lock your position for 48 hours. So for 48 hours, you are unable to withdraw that liquidity and unstake your position, but you still will earn fees during that time. So if I'm happy with the way this is going, I can say approve. And first we need to set approval for all. So if you haven't approved the contract before, we need to set the approval, which is a small gas fee. So now that we have approved the transaction, we can now mint and stake. Now this is going to create the pool, mint in the Genbit bunny into the vault, and it will also pair it with ETH as well. So the gas fee is quite high when you are creating pools on Sushi. We explained this uh, in a previous video, but the first time you create the pool, it is quite high. 
Uh, so we're going to confirm before we do the gas fee. We're just going to do this a bit faster than normal and save it and confirm. Now that that has finished, um, we can see the transaction is successful and we can come in and view our position. So here we can see our locked position. So we're on the staking page and you can see that with the bunny and ETH and we have been locked for 47 hours and 57 minutes. So we're locked for two days before that will be released. Um, once that is released, you'll see it under your My Pools section and then you'll be able to see uh, what the APR is, what you've staked and what you've earned. Now you can add additional, um, you can mint in while this is still running. So we're at 50 or 47 minutes, 56. So if I was to come back into the mint and if we wanted to uh, go to this vault and I'll just do a refresh so we can pick up the wallet again. We can see we've only got one gen bit left. Now I can either mint that in and get the 5% fee or I can mint and stake that as well. Um, if I say continue again, it automatically now will choose the amount of ETH that you need to pair with that item. And it told me that I'm gonna have a 50% pool share because I've also put it in before. Reminds me that we have a 48 hour lock time. In this one though, we have an extra warning. So if you have already deposited, um, if you've already deposited a stake and it is locked, when you do this deposit again, it will reset your timer. So instead of one of them running out in 47 hours and this one running out in 48 hours, they will both be reset to 48 hours. So it becomes the same, same lock. So just remember that if you've got like five minutes left on one and you want to claim on it or you want to uh, release your position, just wait that time before it unlocks. If you are locked into a different pool, it doesn't matter. Um, this will only impact the pools that you already have a lock on. So if I was to be locked with Avastars and I mint in another Genbit bunny, it won't reset my Avastar pool. It will only set my re. Uh, only reset my Gembit bunny. So again, we can go mint and stake. And this time it's a lot cheaper. So the gas fee is cheaper and the amount that we're uh, putting in is uh, much less than before. And again, we'll just do a fast version for this and confirm. All right, now that has finished. If we come in and view our position again, we can see the timer has started again. So we've gone back up to 58 minutes. So only almost two minutes have passed since that last transaction went through. One more thing that I just wanted to show is what happens to your position when you mint and stake a NFT into a vault where you are already staking. So if we come across to our staking area, you can see that uh, we have our bunnies which are locked up. Um, but I do have my Avastar uh, existing pool which is sitting here. Now I've already got some uh, Avastars which I can claim, so I could claim that. Now, if I also wanted to, I could go to the Mint page and I have a Avastar, if I go to the Avastar Vault, I've just minted a, uh, a brand new Avastar from uh, their site and I could either drop it in and get the 5% mint fee or I might want to do the, the mint and stake fee. Now, if I do this, I will now lock up my Avastar position. So we're going to go through this anyway, but if I click continue, what's going to happen on the staking page is that my pools here, this Avastar position, is going to move up into the locked position and I will be unable to claim my Avastar from here and I will be unable to remove my position that I already have. Now, I don't think you want to remove your position if you were staking more Avastars in, um, but you may want, if you do want to use that, claim that first and then run it because once we've started this, it will add a 48 hour timer on this particular pool and you won't be able to claim your existing Avastar that you have, although you will still continue to earn fees on any of the things that happen there. So if I come back to Mint and I come back to go to Vault, here we go, we've got an Avastar here. I'm gonna go 0% Mint fee 
uh, because we're going to mint and stake and I'm going to receive one Avastar in uh, reply. So I'm going to say continue and we're putting in one Avastar and it, it will require 0 0.0715 ETH as well and that will give me a 2% share of the pool. Um, here it notes that we have an existing position so it will uh, will unable to withdraw. So everything I just explained to you is in this paragraph here. It's always good to, to know ahead of time as well. So here we are going to approve. And we can see we're approving the contract first. So if it ever says approve, it means that you're just approving that your next stage can go through. You'll only need to do that once for each of the different contracts um, if you're moving through different pools. So what we sometimes see a lot of people is that they will approve this and then they will go away assuming that they've also minted and staked at the same time, which is not true. Okay, so that transaction is successful now and we now have the mint and stake option. So now it's approved, we have to mint and stake. So I say mint and stake and we are putting in our uh, 0 0.715 for the staking. I'm just going to speed this up and save and confirm. So this is now successful. I can go and view my position. As you can see, we have our Avastar stake up the top here. And we can still see that my pool is still in here, but I now have a locked position. I can't claim anything and I can't deposit anything at the moment and I can't exit from my position. So this will stay locked for the next two days. Again, you will still continue to earn fees on any mints or targeted redeems from those vaults. You're just unable to claim it until your staking position is unlocked. If you have any questions, please head over to the Discord uh, and hit us up on the support or the general channels or email hello at nftx.org.